Shepard. I am one of the managing partners for 270 Commercial. We are a team of commercial agents that specialize on the west side uh, for investment opportunities. We're out of Keller Williams, Santa Monica, um, just right over there. And uh, we, we really have a mindset and methodology that it's not about sales, it's about advisement. Right. And it's about helping clients create legacy and generational wealth through strategies around their real estate. I don't care if they want to buy, if they want to sell, if they want to hold. I want to have a thoughtful conversation about the investments and how right. do we stabilize and shelter this equity that's been built or placed or um, accrued to help a family really put it to the best work possible and achieve their goals. All right, very good. Um, the uh, and again, we will uh, link to Alicia's website after uh, on yeah. the bottom of the video. Um, Let's talk about Los Angeles and, and what you see, um, you know, six months, eight months, a year down the road. What, what do you, oops, sorry about that. Brett, shut that phone off. Um, what do you see as, as what's coming down the road? You know, I think um, it's a good question. I think it starts what happened over like the last couple of years. Right. So we've been in a peaked market for, I mean, going on three years now. Yeah. And I think finally the fatigue of compressed cap rates has gotten to buyers. Institutional um, lending has certainly slowed down a little bit. They're kind of right. done going out on a limb and saying these sub two caps and even like low three caps aren't really as exciting as we thought they were because right. interest rates are going up. And um, we see enough economic change that the overall economy is healthy, but the lending markets are feeling some of that what if as well that I think we saw before 2008. Um, you only stand a peak so long. Right. Cycles last historically around 10 years, and if we're in a peak for three years, you know, eventually we've got to come down off of it. Right. Doesn't mean that it's going to be three years in a pit or three years to get there. It could be six month dip, be a one year dip. Right. Who knows what it is, but the market's going to normalize a little it's bit. Just, it has stabilized. I mean, yeah. it's just been so. I mean, with the cap rates you're seeing on office, retail, multifamily, industrial, I don't really know a whole lot about. I haven't been following that, but. The rest of them, you just wonder how much more could have it gone. It needed to stabilize. It needed to for the owners and for the buyers. We we got into a really speculative market there for the last, you know, at least the last twelve months. Um, a couple of things I think helped create that stabilization. Mm -hmm. um, that's interest rates going up, which everybody knew was happening. Right. They're still incredibly low from a historical standpoint, uh, but buyers' ability to pay more because the interest was cheap. Yeah. You know that 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 normalized a little bit. And we've seen in the multifamily arena, I think what really threw the brakes is Prop 10 being on the ballot in November. Um, it's legislation yeah. around Costa Hawkins. Mm -hmm. It would ultimately change the story around why people buy multifamily properties in California. Um, I think we'll see a real stall in the multifamily market through that vote. Through November. And no matter which way the vote goes, I think that lasts like 60 days. Mm -hmm. of the year, we're going to see a little bit of a bump in activity, right. just from everybody who's hit the pause button, yeah. until we see how that vote goes. Because if, if the vote goes through and we repeal Costa Hawkins, some local governments have already put on their own ballots ways to take advantage of that immediately. Sure. If it doesn't, other local governments have already put some things to tighten down. We're going to see a change in the way rent control in the state works. Yeah. Um, if not this election cycle, then next election cycle. Eventually. Yeah, it's going to happen. So I think, you know, those conditions have helped us come off of the peak finally, and everybody's able to say, okay, like, we're, we're past the peak, but where are we in the downhill? Okay. So you have to look at the trends that follow. You know, we're, we're out of buyer order taking. We're hitting a little bit of that gap where sellers, um, you know, rightfully so, if I were a seller, you want that peak price. No one wants to hear I miss the peak. Sure. Uh, but we're there. Uh, I think probably the next six months is going to be a little bit of helping our clients on both ends of the transaction to see where the market truly is and leading with data to have honest conversations. Right. Do you think uh, office and retail, what are you seeing there as well? I think those, you know, those are seeing a less aggressive slowdown shift. than yeah. multifamily, less, right. less aggressive shift, yeah. Um, but interest rates have certainly created some change there. Retail is having a, a hard time right. um, just because the greater retail story is changing. Right. You know, we're really in the fourth industrial revolution of AI and technology. Yeah. So the box retail store, we're seeing a huge change in who takes up these large spaces. 
and we're having to reinvent what retail space looks and feels like. Yeah, now um, it's being repositioned in other asset classes. So, uh, yeah, so much so, you know, Santa Monica has a, a group of city professionals who work for the city that are actually leading a study of what does Third Street Promenade look like five years from now? Right. How do we stabilize this to continue to have the environment and the attraction point that it has while big box retail is downsizing? Mm -hmm. um, and we've seen some really interesting trades and activity change in tenancy on Third Street Promenade. So I think, you know, mom and pop retail, small retail that's under 5,000 square feet stays healthy because boutique is kind of cool. Right. Um, there's People a lot of things to do with that. A little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. There's, <clears throat> yeah. A, there's a little more. Um, buy local, live local, kind mm -hmm. of buy in on that space, but the big big spaces are having a hit. Are you seeing the restaurants on the promenade? I heard at one point, uh, gossip, no, no true facts, but that was struggling a little bit if they turn that around. Actually, you know, I live right down the street, I never go there. I just, Isn't that funny? I the locals here never go. It's a very big tourist attraction. Yeah. Um, I well, think I should the, say, I don't go during the summer. It just Agreed. So it's a little yeah. wild. Yeah. I think the restaurants, um, we haven't seen anything too shocking change. Okay. The restaurants that maybe haven't updated or kept up with the times or been on right. trend, they're having a harder time. Right. But, um, you know, there's other restaurants that are doing awesome. Yeah. And they're, they're very secure and happy. Their landlords are happy. The leases are strong. We're seeing incredible rent growth. You know, I think we saw, on, on the retail point, we saw Abbott Kenny do something that was an outlier. Yeah. We saw Abbott Kenny really spike and do these like $15 a square foot and everyone said yeah. it was crazy. And now we're seeing those same kind of rates, you know, how many locations on the west side do you hop on CoStar or LoopNet and see that they're asking 120 or more yeah. per year, absolute triple net. Yeah. So I think, you know, that small retail, landlords have adjusted some of their approach. I'll take a shorter lease for a higher gain right now mm -hmm. and see where the market is in three years. So we're seeing shorter lease negotiations. The, the leasing market's pretty active. The sales market's a little little quieter. People, I mean, if you, I would, because, you know, L.A. is pretty, it's a big market, but, you know, if we're going to focus on the west side of L.A., not that big, you know, if you're going to be selling something right now, I mean, where are you going to take that? Where are you going to take it then? Are you gonna, you I get asked that every it? single day. Do yeah, you? Yeah. You're yeah. Gonna, you have to exchange it. So it's been an education process of, like, you know, if you're going to sell this asset, then, they can put you in a triple net somewhere else in the country. And, you know, that whole explanation has been a big one. Yeah, it is a big one. And the, uh, the objection I get to that most, and I think it's a fair one, is why would I sell West Side Real Estate in yeah, Los Angeles there's that too. and buy in, like, Georgia? Yeah. Like, I'm not buying a chicken joint in Georgia right. when I own something on Third Street Promenade. Yeah. Like, my money may work harder for me, but you lose the appreciation value. You're not in the same kind of location. It's not like that sheltered right. class A, so when a dip does hit, that dip hurts a little more. Right. Um, so you know I always tell owners, you have to really take a gut check and see if moving the equity makes sense or if sitting still and waiting through another cycle yeah, is, loan, is what meets your business goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's board. so many options with real estate. Selling does not have to be the only option. Right. Yeah. Um, well, we're probably going a little long here, so we better kind of wrap it up. We are, again, Alicia Shepard, uh, we're going to put her uh, contact information for you below. Feel free to reach out to her and ask questions. And if you haven't subscribed to the RD uh, YouTube channel. amazing. Thank you very, very much. Cool.